I was thinking about this. We we did a little bit of betting segment, right? Last last week, getting into some preseason bets. I think we previewed a little bit of week one type of stuff. Um, we ended up going two for three on that, so that's cool. Um, Take that. It's actually not in, in our hits and misses. I completely forgot about it. We'll it, throw it in. There you point. go. The, 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 here hit it number is. one. Throwing it in right now. <laughs> hit number one before actual hit number one. We went two for three on our bets. That's not bad. Um, yeah, you, so you guys like the casino betting, right? All that. Um, there's an old saying in betting that you can lose – you can only lose like 100% of what you of what you put in, but you can win much more than 100%, 200%, 300%, whatever the risk may be. You can always win more than 100%. You can only lose that 100%. I'll even give you like a non-sports example and kind of boil it down. It's all risk and reward, right? Say, for example, you're late for work, right? You're driving a little bit fast, kind of risky, but the reward outweighs the risk. Right? There's pros and cons always in your head. Right, the whole risk reward, pros and cons. They always go back and forth, right? Pro, just a highway, right? You're only going ten over. You know, you're running the risk, but you, you get there on time. You know, you're not going to get chewed out, right? Cons, you, you get pulled over. Probably going to get a warning anyway, right? The risk and reward, we like that. We like that, right? This is my point here with the Steelers and Kenny Pickett. What the the risk and reward is start Kenny Pickett. Like I, I get it, right? Mitch is safe. He's a veteran. You know, sell him to the locker room or whatever. And I, I actually like Mitch. I thought the signing was fantastic when we actually signed him. But now I, I hmm. right, so I've been back and forth. I've been saying, yeah, maybe wait four weeks and then start Kenny. Or I was saying, we got to start Mitch, let Kenny sit a little bit, right? I am, this is my firm. This is my, this is my final take on Kenny Pickett. This is what I, exactly what I would do. You have to start him. You have to start him. I've seen enough, right? Aggressive wins. The saying, nice guys finish last, yeah, it's got some truth to it, right? So do timid guys. So do timid organizations. Washington has yet to go out and make a splash of quarterback. Yeah, it's going well. They've had Terry McLaurin for three years, a good defense for three years, decent enough line play for three years, and they've settled for Taylor Heineke, Ryan Fitzpatrick, and now Carson Wentz. Their crowning achievement in those three years, they almost beat Tom Brady. That's a, that's like, a, hey, we, we almost beat Brady in the playoffs. That's their crowning achievement. Do we, do we want to be Washington? They're all very average at quarterback. Heineke, Fitzpatrick, Carson Wentz. Well, how about, how about Denver pre-Russ, right? They, they juggle between Brock Osweiler and I think Trevor Simeon was his name and Drew Locke. They were all the definition of mediocrity. Now they make a splash. Hey, hint, hint, they're going to be better, right? Like, that's how it works. How about the Dolphins for years, right? Ryan Tannehill, good, not special. Ryan Fitzpatrick, blah. Right, the bottom of the league is filled with a bunch of blah. Like that, that, that is the bottom of the league. Right, here's what has won. Let's go back five years because I actually think anything before that, I think the league has changed a lot in just the last five years. Right, so we'll just go back five years. Let's look at the Super Bowl teams. Let's look at both teams. Right, because you got to be pretty good, you know, to get the Super Bowl. Right, people always write them off like, oh, you lost the Super Bowl. Okay, well they're the second best team out of thirty-two. I'd rather be that than not make the playoffs. So let's look at both teams. Right. This past year, the Rams. Goff, not good enough. Let's go make a splash, dip into the savings, risk it, go big. Worked out. Get Stafford, go big. How about even Cincinnati, right? Let's We should play it safe, probably get Penne Sewell, you know. Let's, uh, let's work on our line play, right? You know, we could swing big and get Jamar Chase. That worked out pretty well. Then how about Tampa? The year before, right? Ah, swing big, get Tom. Worked out. How about Kansas City? Alex Smith, pro bowler. Doesn't matter. Let's go get Mahomes. Doesn't matter. Tyreek Hill, off the field issues. Doesn't matter. We'll risk it. We'll make it work. Mm, worked. Right about San Francisco. Granted, they're not massive risk takers, but I mean, they pushed the envelope with Jimmy G, who's a backup, and they gave him the most money at that time in the league. That's a risk. Eh, it gets to a Super Bowl. Yeah. I mean, how about New England, right? They've, they've always had the culture, and it started as a slow build, but then it was, you know, this guy's productive, but it doesn't matter. He's getting too expensive. Let's get him out of here. Let's risk it. Let's start the young guy. It's exactly what that's exactly what is sustained or what did sustain that dynasty, right? They get expensive, deal them, young guy. Beats McVay in the Super Bowl. How about McVay and the Rams, right? Progressive, young, flashy. Took a big risk not starting any starters in the preseason, right? That was like the first time that's ever happened. Oh yeah, they were money. Started eight and no, went to the Super Bowl. I mean couldn't move the ball, but yeah, he went to the Super Bowl. How about Philly the year before? Going against that basically same New England juggernaut with a backup quarterback. Let's run a trick play, a reverse, and let's have our third string tight end throw a pass to our backup quarterback. It's a bit of a risk, huh? Right against Bill Belichick's defense, Tom Brady, he pushed the envelope. 
do what the Steelers need to do. Push the envelope. Start Kenny Pickett. I mean, if it doesn't work, pivot fast. I mean, look, outside of the offensive line, he's got everything. He's got it's everything right there. All the tools are right there in front of him. Right? The, the O line's not ideal, but it's not going to be as bad as we think. Right? He's got three to four good wide receivers. You know, he's got a very, very nice tight end. He's got a star back, a great defense. Uh, the offense that he ran at Pitt is very similar to this. Stability in the front office. Hall of Fame coach. And people are like, oh, but, but the line. Okay, well, he's got like nine of the ten check marks you need to be successful as an NFL quarterback. Do it. He, he is tailor-made for him to walk in and start. He's got, what, 60 college starts? Four, no, like 40-plus college starts. It, this is tailor-made for him to walk in and start. And he's looked good. Right, we, you can only lose up to 100% of what you put in. Right, you, you're only going to be so good with Mitch Trubisky. Star Kenny Pickett, he can take you above that 100% threshold. He can get you to the next level. And if he can't, boom, you flip around and draft a quarterback next year. So what? This whole, this whole, oh, but we might be under 500 for the first time under Tomlin. Okay? Like, okay? okay. We, we, they're not going to fire him. They're not going to fire him. I, mean, I don't think they should either. Even if they go under 500, say you start Kenny Pickett, he has a rough, rough year. They go seven and ten. You're drafting somewhere around 11. They realize Kenny's not the guy. You trade a couple picks. Boom! Now you're at eight. Good quarterback. Or you go seven and ten, right? Again, drafting somewhere around 11. We like Kenny, and we go get I don't know a good left tackle at 11 because you can still get a good left tackle or a good lineman at 11. That seems pretty ideal, right? So. You have to see what you have in Kenny now. I don't I don't get it. Starting Mitch, I don't think there's a whole lot of value to starting Mitch Trubisky. I think this is made for Kenny Pickett to walk in, swing big. That's what's been winning in the NFL. That's what's been winning in the NFL. Even basketball, even even in baseball, the Dodgers going to pay for a, a massive payroll, big lineup. What do you know? They won. Right? That's how it works. You gotta swing big. You have to swing big. And I think Kenny Pickett at least at this point, is the biggest swing you can make at the quarterback position. So I think you have to go for it. No, yeah, uh, definitely agree. Um, The thing with Kenny Pickett, you said, you know, he doesn't have the best offensive line. He has a couple uh, places where the Steelers don't check all the boxes, and and I totally get that. But really the only big one is the offensive line. Do you know who else didn't have a big or a great offensive line when they walked in? Exactly, Joe Burrow, and they went to a Super Bowl because you know why? He had great weapons around him, and that's kind of what Kenny Pickett has. Uh, if he's ready to go and he's ready to be rolled out there, I mean, you got George Pickens, you got Chase Claypool, you got Pat Fryermuth, you got Deontay Johnson. You got a lot to throw to to help a young quarterback. But no, definitely uh, agree. Kenny Pickett needs to start week one. 